This is BTV, your home for memorable entertainment television. BTV. Calling all stations. Clear the air lanes. Clear all air lanes for the big broadcast. Tell me, are we not men? Yes. Uh, that's the question in this week's classic feature. When a shipwrecked sailor is picked up by a freighter, only to be dropped off at its first port of call, a strange island with a mysterious compound presided over by one Dr. Moreau, who appears to rule an odd population of unusual-looking inhabitants who seem somewhat less than human. Fuzzy bunny! Not hardly. Also in the neighborhood is a lone female that Dr. Moreau seems to hope to hook up with a shipwreck survivor who realizes he's being held prisoner on the island and that the strange occupants are belligerent beast men who must obey Moreau's laws or be sent to his gruesome genetic laboratory known as the House of Pain. That's gotta hurt. That's why it's called the House of Pain. A frightened fiancé and a courageous captain make their way to the island on a rescue mission only to find themselves in a battle against Moreau and his army of mutated man monsters in the 1932 original version of H.G. Wells' Island of Lost Souls. It's quite disturbing, you know, quite disturbing. Yes, yes, quite disturbing. Yes, yes, and you'll notice both old and new Sven segments in this presentation of the legendary horror film featuring Charles Lawton as a maniacal Moreau and an almost unrecognizable Bela Lugosi as the beast man known as the Sayer of the Law. The hell you say? The uh, Law, he say, and especially noticeable as the exotic Kathleen Burke as Loda, known to horror fans as the Panther Woman. Wow! Yeah, though this story's been remade several times, if it was remade today, Loda the Panther Woman could be kind of reclassified. Can you rephrase that, please? Well, if we let the Panther Woman age for about 20 years, she'll become a cougar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See what I did there? I'm talking to right? Yeah, because now, these days, that's what they refer to. Oh! <laughs> I'd rather have a cougar than a chick like that. Here comes Charles Lawton, Bale Lugosi, and Loda the Panther Woman. <laughs> Remember the old joke? If it's a panther, don't answer. In Island of Lost Souls. <laughs> One more? No, yeah. Hey, watch your aim. You heard him. Overboard with the whole spitting mess. <laughs> hey, please! You. This 1932 movie, though you probably wouldn't know it, was very controversial when it first came out. It was actually banned in some Midwest states, as well as in several countries, including England, because it was felt it was against the laws of nature, to which star Charles Lawton's wife, Elsa Lanchester, who played the Bride of Frankenstein, said, of course it's against the laws of nature, so is Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and Donald Duck, because he doesn't wear pants. The strange remote island of Dr. Moreau is actually just the island of Catalina off California, and Charles Lawton absolutely hated his part in the film, as well as the synthetic hair that was plastered all over the various beast men. There was constantly fake hair all over the place, as if some gigantic dog had been shedding. Ruby do <laughs> Not you. The makeup for the beast men was done by Wally Westmore of the famous Westmore makeup family, and his original design for Bela Lugosi's beast man character wasn't as elaborate as what you see in the film. It kind of extended his nose and had less hair, but when they decided to completely cover his face with hair, Bella had learned his lesson. After turning down the role of the Frankenstein monster because it involved so much makeup, only to see Boris Karloff take it and gain huge fame and incredibly high salaries, Bella did not complain at all about the elaborate makeup. Nah, not at all. 
The Bizarre Beastmen are one of the most memorable parts of this film, as you'll see, one being played by Joe Bonomo, who was a famed bodybuilder and the son of a candy maker who made Bonomo Turkish taffy. Do you remember that? It makes me sick. That's probably why they don't make it anymore. Bonomo was also a stunt double for Lon Chaney Sr. in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And another Beastman is known to fans of the Three Stooges. He's Duke York, who played any number of strange goons with the Stooges. I'm not paid to be that ugly. I think he was, though. Also rumored to be among the Beastmen and or as extras are Buster Crab, Flash Gordon, Alan Ladd, and Randolph Scott, but none of them has ever really been confirmed to have been in the movie. No, no, no. We'll tell you more about the cast later on. It's just that we know some of the early part of this film is pretty slow going, so I wanted to encourage you to stay with it for the strange wonders you'll be seeing later. Uh, Pamela Anderson. She is a strange wonder, but she won't be showing up. Oh, darn. I know. We would like to pay tribute and say goodbye to Rico Browning. Of course, he appeared on our show as the iconic underwater gill man in the Creature from the Black Lagoon series, but also had a great career as a director, producer, and cinematographer. He was the co-creator of the Dolphin series Flipper and directed underwater sequences for everything from the James Bond films Thunderball and Never Say Never Again to the pool sequence in Caddyshack. He passed away at the age of 93, an immensely talented man and the last of the great universal monsters. Let's get back to the island of lost souls, but first, did you hear they discovered a lost episode of the old TV show, The Love Boat? Are you kidding? It was one where Patrick Duffy came on board, hoping to meet some gorgeous women, but all he ran into were dogs. <laughs> Hey, don't insult him. He's been through a very difficult week. He lost his two brothers because they foolishly built their house out of straw and sticks instead of bricks. Well, you see, I, he... You don't owe him any explanation. Are you one of the millions of Americans who's been dumped by your medical insurance company? Well, now you can have affordable medical insurance from Mutual of Berwyn. Berwyn? Mutual of Berwyn offers insurance to everyone with no checkup. As proof of this, we recently insured Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> call for information today. No salesman will call. Hello, jackass. And remember, you cannot be turned down. But you might be turned on. Uh, uh, yeah. Unless our representative is coming to persuade you to make good on missed payments. Get off my back. Why not call for information today? Affordable insurance from Mutual of Berwyn. Berwyn? We're always ready to strike a claim. Ow! Uh, who might you be? Allow me to introduce myself, Mr. O'Gooley. Here's me card. A card? What? Your name's obliterated. No, it's O'Shaughnessy. I am a leprechaun. A leprechaun? Well, here, let me make you feel at home. They're magically delicious. Yes, so is my shillelagh. Have a taste. <laughs> you know, we should probably say just around the corner. I thought I'd answer any questions you might have about the Emerald Isle. Oh, okay, well, tell me all about the Emerald Isle. Hmm? That's where Liz Taylor shops for jewelry at Kmart. The Emerald Isle. Hey, what about the Shamrock Shakes? Oh, I get them whenever I drink too much green beer. I did it all, you asked me. What a terrible case of the Shamrock Shakes. Here's a question. What Irishman do you find on Cedar Dex and Glencoe? Eh, uh, I don't know. What Irishman do you find on Dex and Glencoe? Patio Furniture. <laughs> you get it? Patio. <laughs> Meet my friend, Pat McKisser. No. Oh. Anyway, me bacon. That's me bucko. Yeah. I prepared a wee song in honor of St. Patrick's Day. Hit it, O Graves. Why, this must be a traditional Irish folk song. Something. St. Patrick's Day is a day for Irish. And so do I. And so do I. I think this song's Italian, not Irish. So it's not Begara. It's Marinara. Oh, no. But some would use the day to turn a profit. As we have seen, as we have seen, 
they take. Say Patty's Day, not as occasion to wear the green, but to make the green. Punks and drunks will empty wallets here. Buy green t-shirts and, of course, green beer. While shysters sell green socks and Nikes. Oh, St. Patrick, how I fear. The snakes you draw from Ireland are all in business here. Hey! Hey, that was great. You know, that was really good, but tell me something. You ever think of doing an Irish rap? I'll give you an Irish rap. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Let that be a lesson for oh, you. Man. <laughs> Give me a magic <laughs> delicious. Get him away from me, will you? Lucky charm. Just <laughs> toss him in the river while it's green. That's a little weak <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> Let's return to the Island of Lost Souls, where Dr. Moreau just got done showing Parker his collection of Maxim magazines. You'll be wanting a cold shower, I take it, before dinner. Followed by Meet the Browns and Tyler Perry's Medea goes to Berwyn. Berwyn? <laughs> I promised we'd talk about the cast. Our star, Dr. Moreau himself, is the distinguished actor Charles Lawton, also remembered for playing Captain Bly in Mutiny on the Bounty and for directing the amazing and frightening Night of the Hunter. He said he based Moreau on his dentist, and he didn't have to learn how to crack a whip. He had already learned that for a previous role, so he was pretty accurate with it. Ow, ow, ow! Well... Close. His other big horror role was as Quasimodo, the hunchback of Notre Dame. And speaking of dames, Parker's fiance, played by Lila Hyams, also appeared in a legendary horror film, Todd Browning's Freaks, in which she played Venus. Our other female star, Kathleen Burke, plays the island's only female, Lota the Panther Woman. She was actually a Chicago dental receptionist and former model who entered a contest sponsored by Paramount Pictures to find the Panther Woman. She won over almost 60,000 other contestants. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Yes. Parker is played by Richard Arlen, who was a huge star in silent films, and went on into sound films doing a lot of westerns, and he even appeared in the horror flick The Crawling Hand. And keep your hands to yourself. Uh, they keep crawling. Later on, we'll meet Paul Hurst, who plays Captain Donahue, who also did a lot of westerns, and played an army deserter in Gone with the Wind. There he goes now. Yeah, he's gone. One of the Beastmen I forgot to mention earlier on is played by Hans Stanky. Yeah! That's Stanky, not Stinky, who was a pro heavyweight wrestler. Here's some final notes. Rumor has it that the sound man for this film wanted to create a language for the Beastmen and recorded animal sounds and foreign phrases, then played them backwards. The results? The sound caused test audiences to get nauseous and throw up. <laughs> well, hey, you're not going to throw up, are you? No, I didn't hear it. Uh, this film was sold to Universal by Paramount in 1958 for TV distribution and has yet to receive a total restoration, which is why it's in the condition it's in. And finally, after making this movie, Charles Lawton claimed that he couldn't go to a zoo for the rest of his life. Hey, what, was he afraid he'd run into a co-star? Oh, hi there. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello uh, there, how are you? Stinky uh, the Mama. monkey boy. Hi, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. You know, there must be somebody in this whole idea of turning an animal into a woman. I mean, in Island of Lost Souls, we had that panther girl, Loda. Uh, yeah. It's interesting that animals seem to make really hot women. <laughs> My dear boy, it would behoove you to speak civilly. Show some respect when talking about a lady. Oh. It is my learned opinion that any wild animal can be a lady, as long as she follows the laws of etiquette. Shall we try it? Oh, by all means. <laughs> Excellent. Let us commence with this lady. <laughs> <clears throat> I thought we were going to deal with this lady a little further along her evolutionary track. Nonsense. This specimen will do fine. After all, nothing shows off a lady's elegance like a fur coat. <gasps> oh, well, this is a nice one, too. It denotes the lady's taste for the finer things in life, like Dolce and Gabbana. I think this lady would prefer Dolce and Banana. Jeez. Quiet, you. Now, the prudent female can learn a lot about being a lady from noting the mistakes of others. For example, it is impolite to stare. You got funny eyes. And as far as male companionship goes, one must be choosy in picking an escort. A lady should never just grab the first man who comes along. Patience can lead to the divine. Uh-huh, and this patience should be swinging from divine. <laughs> you know, the only good thing about this is that we've got the sequels to this movie, so we'll get our money's worth out of the ape suit. <laughs> This brings to mind a valid point. Though a lady must show her breeding by being tolerant, she should not be afraid to stand up for herself. 
Let us give our furry female an example. This charming young lady can demonstrate. A lady should not tolerate rudeness. Here, my boy, say this to her. Oh, okay. Uh, really? Oh, okay. <clears throat> hey, Toots. <laughs> there, my simian sweetheart. Do you see how you should react? Hey, believe me, Shorty has that part down. <laughs> well, there you have it. This delightful creature is well on her way to being a true lady. I predict she will easily and confidently reach the heights. Yeah, especially if she climbs the Empire State Building. Oh, come on! That isn't very ladylike. On the contrary, sir. She's once, twice, <laughs> three times a lady. Come along, my dear. After all that stress on your delicate hands, let me treat you to a manicure. Yeah, hooey! My man! Hello, it's me, Dr. Z. And if it's Saturday night, I'm watching Sven Gulli on MeTV. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm home on a Saturday night. Well, let's say I got invited to a party at the Playboy Mansion, and on the way over, I wolfed down a whole tray of lasagna in the Uber. And by the time I get to the grotto, <laughs> well, there's only so much you can blame on James Kahn. Thanks, Sven. You're always there for me. Conditioner, the Island of Lost Souls continues as Dr. Moreau locks one of his experiments in a room and forces him to watch a marathon of Jersey Shore episodes. <laughs> Wait, Loda, come back. Moreau's just going to give Parker some spider DNA so he can become Peter Parker. Is your spider sense tingling again? Well, yours might be if you think you've seen this story before, because there have been several remakes of it, usually titled Island of Dr. Moreau. And in fact, I've shown the version with Burt Lancaster as Dr. Moreau, Michael York as the shipwrecked guy, and Barbara Carrera as the exotic woman on my show before. Well, how could I forget that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, forget her. So you've seen my animal men. Then you must be, uh... Moreau. 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 Moreau, Moreau. It's, it's off to work, work we go. go. Actually, I thought you were the world's worst Burt Lancaster impression. <laughs> I'm a scientist, not a rich little. A rich little what? I don't know what you're talking about. You've seen what I can do with animals. I'm a humanizer. Oh. Humanizer, humanizer, baby, I'm a humanizer. Didn't you hear him say enough with the singing already? You shouldn't be doing that, I'm warning. Ah, ha, ha. I've made amazing animal-human hybrids from the residents of my island. Hey, what did you do with that hot Maria, huh? I didn't have to do anything. She was already a fox. Woohoo! I agree. That's but I've made some amazing animal men. For example, I made Wolverine. Wolverine? The X-Men Wolverine? No. Mine is a combination of a sheep and Benverine. Wolverine. Yeah, okay. I also combined a human with a jackass. A jackass? Oh, I I'd like to see that one. Just look in a mirror. Hey, Sven, if you want to see men become animals, just go to the strippers eat free night over at Old Country Buffet. They're still doing that? Uh -huh. You know what they call residents of the island of Dr. Moreau? No! Morons. <laughs> Who writes this trash? We have writers? That does it, Alice. You can't talk that way to me, because I'm the king of this castle. I'm the king! Yeah, you're the king, all right. King Kong! <laughs> oh, you're a riot! A regular riot! One of these days, Bang! Zoom! You're going to Baboon! Ah, uh, what do you say there, monkey boy? Yeah! Snort! You won't believe that wife of mine. She says I'm losing my humanity. Well, that could be a good thing. Uh, you could probably stand to lose about 50 pounds worth of it. <laughs> Shut up! I tell her I'm human. I got my tender human side. Why, I'm so sensitive. I'm into bananas in pajamas. Uh, from the looks of you, you're into bananas in your stomach. <laughs> mm, 
<laughs> that does it, Snorton. I'm gonna kill you. You... Oh, come on, pal of mine. That'll just prove to her that she's right. All you gotta do is show your wife your tender side there. You know. Uh, you're right, pal. I know. I'll get her that beautiful coat that she wanted. Made entirely out of skunk fur. Skunk fur? I'll tell you. It's amazing how such a beautiful coat can come from such a foul-smelling beast. Well, yeah, but you could always start using deodorant. <laughs> Get out! Get out! <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> this is Doug Graves, our current champion, who today will try to win over $26 in cash and flea collars in the Game About Game, where animals give you the answers. Beastmasters. And now here's your host, Sven Gulli. After that introduction, we're almost out of time. Aww. So let's get on with our game. Doug, how are you? Glad to hear it. You all know how our game works. I ask a question, and you must read the mind of the animal of your choice to find the answer. Doug, what animal do you choose for your first question? Uh, I'll take the hawks, then. OK, give him the bird. <laughs> Not me, him. All right, read that hawk's mind to answer this question. Who was the first man to fly to the North Pole? I can't get him to concentrate. Bird. Uh, that's right, Admiral Bird. Yeah. First man, why to the North Pole? All right then. Now, uh, who do you choose next, Doug? I'll take uh, ferrets for fifty. Okay, and here's your question: In the Walt Disney film Pinocchio, what song does Jiminy Cricket sing to the wooden boy as a signal that he needs help? <laughs> Oh, they won't answer. Boy, I'd like to give the little weasel... Uh, give a little whistle is correct. Yeah! Jimmy Cricket has Pinocchio. Give him a little whistle. And, and now it's time for final ferocity. Who do you choose for the answer that could make you our all-time champion? Uh, it's got to be the bear, Sven. Okay, he's going to go bear. <laughs> Not that. For the championship, during the holiday season, who usually brings presents? Oh, all I see is the bear. Claws. Claws. Santa Claus. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The correct answer during the holiday season, who usually brings presents? The answer is the UPS man. Oh. Well, that's about it for this show. We'll see you next time. Remove Funny Bone. Uh, we now return to the Island of Lost Souls and uh, Lotus, sweetie. That outfit you're wearing doesn't hide that extra pint of ice cream you had for lunch. Come on, suck it in. Oh, you don't know what short wave is? Well, it's kind of like this. See? Dork. Okay, uh, beast man. Okay, yeah. Dr. Moreau asked me to check up on you. First, let's get the routine over with. What is the law? No personal checks. Not that law, the other law. Uh, not to run on Altoids. That's all fours. Close enough. Now, oh, again, what is the law? Not to eat meat and not to present surprise evidence until the last possible second. I told Moro not to make a beast into Perry Mason. Okay, once more. What is the law? Not, not to, to spill, spill blood. blood. Yeah. Uh, that's blood. Uh, are we not men? You don't know? My life is ruined! Whoa, Moreau did the wrong kind of surgery on that one. <laughs> Let's try again. Are we not men? We, we are Devo. Yeah, this is the movie where Devo got that. Okay, here's your island update. Good news, Moreau has agreed to pose for Playgirl. Uh, I think I won't be sick. <clears throat> I'm with you on that one. Also, tonight is the night. Be prepared to come up to the house. Oh, no. We must go to... House of Pain? Yes, you're all due for a poodle cut and a flea and tick bath. And here's an update on Moreau's newest experiments. He has successfully crossed a carrier pigeon with a woodpecker so that when it delivers a message, it can knock on the door. The doctor also is experimenting with crossing animals with inanimate objects. He's crossed an octopus with a bale of hay and gotten a broom with eight handles. I don't know. He also crossed an ostrich with a bottle of Budweiser so he could get a glass of beer with its head in the ground. Uh, what is the law? <laughs> Not to spill bud. 
with its head in the ground, oh. hey? Isn't this just like earlier bit with bad Burt Lancaster imitation? Oh, okay, that's it. You know where you're going? To House of Pancakes. What? They have cherry berry fresh and hairy breakfast for just five ninety nine. Oh, no. Are we not men, you? <laughs> hey, what is the law? Well, occupancy by more than fifty three people is prohibited. Hello, this audience are oil painting. Night, folks. Let's get back to the island of lost souls. And one of the questions I get the most from viewers is, what request do you never get from female Sven fans, you mean? Well, the answer is... Talk to me more. <laughs> hey, Sven, that guy in the movie just mentioned you. <clears throat> hey, Doug, I have a joke about Loda. Knock, knock. Who's there? Panther. Panther who? Looks like her panther somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. So if Parker has to live on the island, why doesn't he have to obey Moreau's law? Well, I guess with like any law, there must be some additional clause. I know. That's why Parker didn't hook up with Loda. She has additional claws. <laughs> To the room, it was an eerie sight. Everybody dressed like monsters to see. They were watching Sven Gulli on me TV. He stood there in his casket, he was laughing away. He talked about the movie he was gonna play. Frankenstein the wolf and did the monster mash. And Dracula's daughter, she was having a blast. She did the stomp. Sven Gulli stomp, she did the stomp. Sven Gulli stomp. When the moon is full, the zombies from Now everybody's doing the Spangoolie song. Now the creature from the Black Lagoon will make you scream. The Invisible Man, he's dancing on the screen. Boris and his wife are a creepy sight. Spangoolie is the man every Saturday night. He'll take you to the castle where the monsters stay. Crack and his wives, they sleep all day. He'll show you all the monsters that love to haunt. And all of them are doing the Spangoolie Stomp. They did the stomp. Spangoolie Stomp. They did the stomp. Spangoolie Stomp. When the moon is full, the zombies rock. Now everybody's doing the Spangoolie Stomp.
guys. I'm the Spinguli Monster. My friends call me Bob, but the villagers call me Get Him! I watch you every Saturday night. Some of my favorites are Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Blob, and Ghost and Mr. Chicken. I'm the terror of towns, creator of calamity, and the bringer of 13 items to express checkout. I'm a Spano Spenguli because I love to learn about the history of horror movies. Some of my favorites being The Haunting, Night of the Hunter, and Habit. Now, I'd like to tell you more about it, but the villagers are coming with their pitchforks and it sounds like cardio day. I'm Myra from terrifying Tacoma in my oh-so-spooky living room. Ooh. Hi, Spanguli. Hi, it, it, it's your buddy, the Green Ripper. Hi, look, I was swimming over here in the Atlantic Ocean, and I uh, I found a boat that was coming to America from Taiwan. It's, it, you're not going to believe it. It is full of rubber chickens. Hello, my name is Jack, and this is a Little Frankie, and we come to you from Evergreen Park, Illinois. <laughs> it's a dump. Spagoolie's gone. My name is Fauna. Up the dawn and I'll wreck your lawn. Come into my lair. I'll see you there. My name is Count Alfio from Omaha, Nebraska. I want to be the spawn of Spingoolie because I love the classic movies and the B-movies. Why am I a fan of Spingoolie? Well, how can you not be? Spawn? Yes, Spawn. Because I'm Slade, spawn of Spingooly. <laughs> Hello, my name is Gus. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and they call me Gooly Gus. <laughs> I should be the spawn of Spingooly because not only have I had experience in film industry, not much experience, just carrying around cans, but also I know my movies. When I was a wee boy in Wajak, Michigan, I'd have my body parts moved around, and that changed my life forever. My name is Alice W. from Los Angeles, California, and I knew I was a spawn of Sven when I saw it in the cards. I'll call a plumber. Let's return to the Island of Lost Souls. And coming up, we'll be doing our usual mail and email segment with Carwin, the prehistoric rubber chicken that we like to call the prehistoric postal poultry. Hey, Fuzzy. If you want to watch, there's a two-drink minimum. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll give you your own water dish. <laughs> Kerwin, before we get to our mail, I've been wanting to mention this since we heard about it from several people a couple months ago on another network. There was one of those police on patrol shows running live at the same time as our show. And they had officers being called to an apartment when people heard screaming coming from it. Open up, police! Yeah, well, they found out the occupants were watching our show with Kiss of the Vampire, and all the screaming was coming from their TV. <laughs> well, thanks to all you who told us about that. Yeah, we won't even ask why you were watching that show instead of us. You can't handle the truth! Let's get to some of our mail. Sven, you've heard of those artificial intelligence image generators that can create pictures? Well, Kurt Shimala used one and asked you to create an image of what you would look like as an early 1960s horror host based on your picture. And this is what it came up with. I'm not paid to be that ugly. And then he asked the same thing, but as a 1950s horror host, and this is what came up. I failed to see the significant difference. No idea why the 50s one is color and the 60s one is black and white. Either way, I end up looking like Salvador Dali. Well, hello, Dolly. Sing me a little song, eh? Hmm? Not now. Well, with St. Patrick's Day this month, we wanted to show Michaela Stormer's St. Patrick's Day art. He's after our pot of gold, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela always sends us a lot of artwork, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we've been getting a lot of Sven Nutcrackers, and here's one more. From Bogothic artist Vicki Van Gogh. She's from Hicksville, New York. Berwin. No, Hicksville. And she added some nice details to this creation. We especially like the body Sorrel-headed cane he's holding. <gasps> oh, and it's a nice one, too. 
And okay, we have one more, but this will be the last Nutcracker we show for a while. Got it? If, if you say so, I say. <laughs> yeah, I do. This is a hand-painted one by Cindy Lavasseur from Michigan. She was introduced to our show by her daughter in the Jefferson Park area of Chicago. Berwin. No, Chicago. And that's it. If you send Sven any more Nutcrackers, he'll go nuts. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? Not that he isn't a little nuts already. I'll buy that. Thanks a lot. I wanted you guys to see this. Jeff Cesar was on our friend Chris Jericho's wrestling cruise recently and wore his Sven shirt. And he's pretty sure that Chris recognized it because he pointed at him and smiled. And I'm pretty sure Chris did recognize it because he actually has a Sven shirt of his own. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's current with AEW Wrestling, and I know he's a big fan of horror movies. That's very cool, and so is this. It's some artwork done by Eric Fargiorgio of Erie, Pennsylvania, and made a point of telling us that it's some Erie artwork from Erie Eric from Erie, Pennsylvania. What sort of meaningless double talk is this? Never mind. He also sent some photos, including one of him at the Point Pleasant West Virginia Mothman statue. No way. That's way too creepy. Thanks to everybody who sends us artwork and photos, and you can always send a photo as an attachment to Sven at Svengoolie.com. Just remember, we get so much stuff, we can't show everything we get, but we like seeing everything. Now, hit the theme for us, Corito. Thank you for all those cards and letters. Michael in Florida got the Toy Ink Sven pen set for his birthday. You can't pin that on me. <clears throat> Back for more of Island of Lost Souls, and wait, lady, I've got to warn you. That wacky funster, Dr. Moreau, loves to use those trick birthday candles that just won't blow out. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God! Uh, but in other news, Phil Donahue is still fine. It's me, damn you, it's me, me, he wants me. Quiet, Marlo. Say there, flabby fanatics. Are you tired of costly exercise gimmicks that could do you a lot more harm than good? Ow! Then why not get fit the natural way? Forget that old thigh master. Now there's the beast master. Yes, the solid state durable calisthenicless calcium contraption has no moving parts to wear out, needs no power source, and is made of materials you'll find right in anyone's body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have fun searching, and it's so simple to use. Just take the Beastmaster unit, which has been pre soaked in aromatic, flavorful beast gravy, to any area populated by wild beasts. In no time at all, your aerobic exercise will begin. Yes, you'll be working out the natural way. Getting fit in the same way our animal friends stay in shape. So why not order yours today? <laughs> the Beastmaster. When it comes to fitness products, it stands alone. To order, send cash, check, or a rancid steak to this address. Order a second Beastmaster for your dog, too. <laughs> Did I borrow your hairbrush? Uh, now the conclusion of Island of Lost Souls, and we've got some refreshments here. There's a uh, root beer, a Dr. Rocket, and an orange whip. Moreau, which one do you want? Give me the whip. Well, so ends the often remade tale of Dr. Moreau, and, and you have to admit, it really isn't that far-fetched. Are you kidding? Well, come on. How many times have people made a monkey out of me? Dead. Monkey boy, dad. Only if you ask me nice. Uh, stay with us. We're going to monkey around with some more fun stuff after these commercials. Well, folks, that is going to be a tough act to follow. They are good commercials. Hello again. Kerwin here. Kerwin? No, Kerwin. Don't confuse the viewers. There are still some of them that think my name is Berwin. You're putting me on. No, but we are putting on some more Sven stuff uh, right now. I am the Spawn of Spangooly. <laughs> you know what happened to Curlin? Him and Tony got together, and now they're the chicken of the sea. <laughs> My name is Crystal Serpico, but you can call me Mrs. Horror Show. I live in Round Lake, Illinois, which is... But at least it's not Furwin. <laughs> Looking goody in the hoodie. I am the spawn of Swingooly. 
For a limited time only, if you choose me to be the spawn of Swingooly, you will also get, with me of course, <clears throat> a nice jar of leeches. My name is Singuli, and boy, do I have stories to tell you. I've been around forever. It's me, the real spawn of Singuli, and I can prove it. 1973, Saturday morning, we got up and we watched the mighty heroes together. Stone Man, Tornado Man, Cuckoo Man, Rope Man, and Diaper Man. Let's go, heroes! Singuli, we're big fans. Uh, it's an honor to be even talking to you that you may see this. It gives me chills. Um, I'm spooked already. Well, all we do is lay around and watch all the horror movies. Hey, everybody, it's Sean from the Jersey Shore, or as I like to say, Sean, the spawn of Sven Gulli. You're a late night DJ with all your hauntingly great favorites. Uh, hello, Sven Gulli and crew. My name is Adam Crone. I'm a huge fan. I got your autographed picture over here next to my Hall of Notes album. Big fan of those guys, too. Big fan of the 80s. I saw my first horror movie on your show in St. Charles, Illinois, when I was a kid. Uh, and it opened up a huge, opened up my life to the world of horror. So thank you for that. Sven Gulli is looking for someone to be the spawn. A spend good. Now, let me think who would be perfect for it. Let me pick my brain for a minute. I want to be the spawn because, hey, the original Spinguli was as cool as me. Good to see you back. I start to get a little concerned here. What, that you'd have to watch more commercials? Shut up, dude. <laughs> I think you'd rather watch this. Whoa, okay, all you crypt potatoes. Time to get your dead bodies into shape. Let's start our corpse calisthenics. Get up off that slab and... Uh, Tombstone, what are you doing here so early in the show? Oh, Sven, don't have a fit. Get fit. My new goal in life is staying in shape during that most difficult time of life after you're dead. What? That's what right. You... It's never too late for anybody to get in shape. Why, I've devised the perfect exercise regimen that... Wait a minute. You're just a skull. What exercise can you do? Uh, what else? Chin-ups. Hey, Ghoulie, you cons aren't idiot. I am so mad. I'm sitting at home last night watching the Richard Bay show, yeah. and suddenly a brick comes crashing through my front window with a note attached to it. A brick with a note? What did the note say? We fix broken windows, $50. We fix broken Next week on Svengooli... Congo is the subject of my experiment. The little chimp or the big ape? As big as he has become, I still have the same affection for him. Oh, he gets even bigger. Watch Conga on the next Svengooli. Saturday night on MeTV. Well, thank you for joining us this week for the extra bonus material. And of course, the original version of Island of Lost Souls. I bet some of you thought it'd be a place where people lose their shoes. Nah, not at all. Nah, not at all. Well, I'm not going to lose any time telling you that next week... Let me just see who's there. Just hoping it's not one of the beast men. I remember when Dr. Moreau asked me, I'd like you to be the beast man at my wedding. And I said, well, not hardly, because after all, oh, I don't... Oh, Sven, you mustn't judge the animal men too harshly. Uh, my uncle, a famous violinist, got tired of playing for ungrateful people, so he decided he would only play for animals. Okay. He went to Africa, to the jungle, took out his violin, and played his heart out. Suddenly, every kind of animal surrounded him, listening and enthralled by his beautiful music. They all sat spellbound until a huge lion charged out of the brush, pounced on my uncle and ate him. Ooh. A parrot cried out, what's the matter with you? We were all enjoying that man's wonderful music and you had to eat him up. Why did you do that? And the lion put his paw up to his ear and said, eh? <laughs> Screwy! See you in St. Louis!
And the punchline for the related joke, Van Gogh, you're a genius. Huh? Yeah, we've done that one before, too. Good night, everybody. <laughs> well, so much for this week. Thank you so much for joining us once again here. I hope we come back next time for more. Not tomorrow. We already did that this week. So there'll be less tomorrow. Hi, Les Morrow here. You know, nine out of ten doctors said the dead doctor doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. I'll see you next time here. Take care. Good night. Good news. One more chicken? Okay. See, we got a quota. This is BTV, your home for memorable entertainment television.